Welcome to John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. We're on beautiful Lake Geneva in southern Wisconsin fishing for smallmouth bass. Fleet Farm presents John Gillespie's Waters and Woods. Fleet Farm, the ultimate fishing headquarters. Yes, folks, the last two weeks of April were rather chilly here in the Midwest, and uh, we're going to start fishing today for smallmouth bass. It's supposed to warm up, it's supposed to be sunny, Matt, and we're on Lake Geneva, which is a crystal clear lake. So when you have cool temperatures like this, what do you look for? Yeah, so in a deep, deep, I mean, uh, second deepest lake in the state of Wisconsin, it, these, these fish take a little bit longer to warm up, right? So when you have consecutive sunny days like this, these fish will move out of that 20 to 30 feet of water, and they're going to start moving up on the flats, and anywhere from like 20 to 10 is mm -hmm. going to kind of be the zone. So it's kind of interesting, too, this time of year, folks. You don't have to start at the crack of dawn. I like um, midday when the sun has had a chance to warm up that shallow water. Yeah, it's amazing what the sun will do in spring like this, especially on deep, clear lakes. It just rejuvenates these fish, puts them in a completely different mood, and they should bite definitely in the afternoons. Well, we got Blake and Chris McGillis with us today. We're going to catch something. Yeah, that's a good crew. Girl. Yeah. Hey, folks, the show we're using and how we're using it, all of that coming up right after this. family of side-by-sides, proven to be the best. Realize your adventure during the Yamaha Get On Ride sales event. Get up to $2,000 customer cash and low APR for 84 months on your new Wolverine r -Max. Claw, the pick of the week. The Aberdeen hook is a perfect hook in May using live bait as the water is still warming up. Eagle Claw, the only hook made in the USA. Hey, welcome back, folks. Early May, cool morning, crystal clear lake, smallmouth bass, largemouth bass, and you're going to start us off with a bait that we just reel real steady. This is called a... Yep, that's a 2.8 tickle tail. Okay, with a little swim jig on there, yep. a light swim jig. Yep, eighth ounce Google Eye. And then on this one here, this is kind of cool. You got a little spinner on here. Yeah, huh? this is a brand new one, and what that does is just an extra added attract and almost kind of looks like multiple minnows coming through the water. So cast out, real steady retrieve. Yeah, John, in the springtime, you can catch these fish in the middle of the water column, so it doesn't have to be right on the bottom. <laughs> Look at that, Chris McGillis oh. is going to be the first to connect this morning. And I'll tell you what, it is amazing how clear this water is, isn't oh, it, Chris? Oh, it's a nice it's one. It's a nice one, John. <laughs> okay, let's get that net, get that clamoroo. Is it a big fish, Chris? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a nice, it's a nice right, smallie. Way to go, buddy. Nice Can't start. complain. On the tickle leech, John. Oh, you can see how clear that water is, oh. folks. Well, that, this, Lake Geneva is known for beautiful smallmouth bass. Okay, here he comes. Oh, he's a bite. Real light line. Boy, look at that. Uh, yeah, that's a nice, <laughs> nice fish, fish to start the day. Now, Matty B, is that bigger than normal, buddy? Um, I would say, John, in, in, in May out here, that's a, just a good, solid three-pound fish. Here we go. Look at that. Look at that. How was that battle there, Chris? It was great. Right in the tip of the mouth, John. Nice Nicely job. Nicely done. Way to get started. Nicely hey, done. Let's go. Let's How go. How was the retrieve there, Chris? Real slow. I was just dragging it. Uh, Maddie and I were talking. Just drag it nice and slow. Almost just let it sit for a while. Yeah. Yeah, water's 50, so pull it. Let it sit. You're imitating a crayfish with that presentation, and that's what these fish are coming up. They're either on schools of minnows, or they're eating crayfish in these rocks. Ooh, that was a cool hit. <laughs> that was a cool hit, Matt. Nice job. I cannot tell you how slow I was working that thing, buddy. Nice job. Whoa, whoa. That was pretty close to the boat. Yeah, it was. So that's working all the, whoa. Whoa, here he comes. There we go, Blake. Whoa, look at how clear that water is. Isn't that something? Beautiful fish. I mean, that is neato. There we go. 
not as big as the one Chris caught. But I'll tell you what, folks, those smallmouth fight so wonderfully. And I can't get over, Matt, how slow you're moving that bait. And that fish is cold to the touch, but nice chunk there. That's what, about 16, 17 incher right there, Matt? 16, that's a and nice, look at how that's a hit nice that. male. Yeah. And, and Matt, I can't stress more the importance of slow reeling. Show the folks how slow you're reeling this thing in. Yeah, John, so the trick fish in these spring flats like this with, with the tickle tail is, I know we're gonna pretty much be in that eight to 12 foot of water, so we're gonna pick an eighth ounce jig head, and it's just a steady retrieve, and, oh geez, I thought I got bit there. Steady retrieve just like this, and then the first thing I do if I start to hit the bottom is just raise your rod tip and just keep that steady retrieve, and you wanna stay anywhere from one to three feet off the bottom, and this gin clear water, these fish will chase it down, follow it, and eat it. Hey, there we go, Matty B. There we go. Hey, uh, we're gonna tell the folks a little story about what we did. <laughs> And is this a decent one? Yeah, it's a nice fish. Yeah, I'm, I'm nice pretty fish. impressed so far with the size. All right, good job there, Matty B. Oh, I hope. Scoop him. Nice. Oh, nice job Jeez, on the clam strong. there, Chris McGillis. Hey, Matty B, though, we, we should tell the folks, you know, we started out in the shallow flats down here this morning. And, uh, you know, we caught three fish and we decided let's go try some deep drop offs and didn't get bit. But the couple hours we were gone, the sun's been beating on this spot. That can make a difference. Yeah, John, there's no doubt. I mean, all three flats that we kind of went through, like you said, caught three. I mean, we've probably seen two, two and a half dozen fish cruising. And this is kind of uh, only the second sunny day. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that we can have some fun. I mean, that was the first cast. So hopefully that's a good sign and not a curse. I really slowed my retrieve down that time, Matt. This isn't a very big fish. Here he is. I can just flip him in there, Blake. Okay. No, I, I'll tell you what. I was going painfully slow on that retrieve. It was kind of interesting, Matt. I felt the tick and I just kept reeling and then he came back and hit it pretty good. That's a little guy right there. But you're reeling actually painfully slow, aren't you, Matt? Yeah, John, when this water's cold, slower the better, and that's why we're running eighth ounce uh, Google Eye swim bait heads real slow, and that's gonna keep it up off the bottom even as you're reeling super slow. And to your point about you felt the tick and you kept reeling, that's the biggest thing when you're fishing swim baits and paddle baits like this, especially in cold water, is let the fish load up on the rod. What I mean by that is, is, as John said, you're reeling real slow, you feel a tick, keep reeling until that, until the line gets tight and you almost kind of, they almost kind of bend your rod over and then you lean back into them and set the hook. Because if you jerk it too early and you feel that first tick, you might pull it away from them. Breaking news from Fleet Farm. Check out this deal. Save $10 on the Abu Garcia Max X spinning reel on sale for $19.99. Maybe we got something going there here, There we go, huh? Johnny. We're on to something. That's three now in a they, row. Well, they, they don't school up this time of year, do they? No, but you will see at least smallmouth a lot of times on these inland lakes. There's like two or three of them together a lot of times. Okay, I get it. Yeah, you, yeah, You right. won't get the big, big schools, but this one choked it. Look at this. Really well, got it good, huh? Oh, when they're eating it like this, look at this. This is what you want to see. Look at that, gonzo. You know, that is cool. But I want to mention too, you know, these this water is so clear here and we're fishing anywhere between eight and 10 feet. And uh, the one question I had, where do you want this bait running? Do you want it close to the bottom or the middle of the water column or what? Yeah, so on these kind of eight to 12 foot flats, John, I like the bait a couple feet off the bottom. Okay. Um, really clear water like this. I mean, these fish can see it from a long ways away and if they want to eat it, something triggers, they're gonna come chase it down and eat it. Now we're definitely a couple of weeks away from these fish spawning. Oh yeah. So they're not really school up, they're just, are they kind of cruising looking for spawning stuff or yeah, what? Yeah, they're just moving up. They want that sun, these rocks and these dark spots on these rocks warm up right away with multiple warm sun days like this. And these fish want to go and seek out that heat. And then yeah, they're gonna, the, the, the flats that they spawn on, those are the ones that they're roaming right now. And like you said, two or three weeks, they will be making nests and, and laying eggs. I'll tell you what folks, May is here and grilling season is in full gear. And you love the Johnsonville better with cheddars, right? I'm a cheese guy and I'm a cheddar guy. Okay, here's the good news. 
These are Johnsonville better with cheddars, but there's double cheese, Matt. Oh, okay, wow. now not yet. 100% <laughs> cuts of premium pork. They put twice the amount of cheddar cheese in there. Throw them on the grill for five, 10 minutes, and they are good to go. All right, boys, take a bite. Ready? It's oozing everywhere. I love it. Do you like it, Chris? Mm -hmm. Aren't those great? Uh, that's really, really good. That really is good. Johnsonville, better with cheddars with double cheese. Look for them at your favorite retailer today. We were fishing Lake Geneva in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. A one-hour drive from Milwaukee, 45 minutes from Chicago, and six hours from Minneapolis. Hey folks, you gotta check out Pete and John Talk Fishing on Amsoil's YouTube channel. We'll give you all the news from the Midwest. Yeah, John, we talk about what to use, where to use it, and how to use it. Check out Amsoil's Pete and John Talk Fishing every month on the Amsoil YouTube channel. They say great minds think alike, which could explain why for over 50 years, more anglers have chosen Humminbird to see the water more clearly. Our tech predicts where the bites are, and our innovations foreshadow the sport's future. We've helped anglers win tournaments and the weekend, taught them to fish smarter, not harder. So if you're not already on board, it's worth asking yourself why, when the people in the know agree that Humminbird is simply clearly better. You know, folks, with my buddies using leeches and crawlers all day, I'm glad I've got the Johnson Pump Washdown Kit. All I can do then is spray down the boat and get all that stuff out of there. But the Johnson Pump Washdown Kit has another use. It's 92 degrees and humid today. Now watch. I'll take care of my buddy Tom in the back. Ah, there, there we go, Tommy! Oh, hey, man! <laughs> what do you think of that, buddy? I love it. I need one. Yeah. Can he put them on pontoon boats? They're great for pontoon boats. There you go, buddy. <laughs> Wait until my wife has sees that one. I'm going to get her, too. <laughs> This one feels a little bit better than the last one nice I got, Nice work. Matt. Nice work. Boy, just really, really slow, like I said, folks. Okay. Ooh. I'll tell you what, they fight too, buddy. Blake, you got to catch one. I know. Today is not my day. So far. Matt, this one feels pretty good. Nice job. All right. Staying down. I can't wait to but see here it. Here he is. Okay, Blake, get him in there. Not a not a huge bass, but when you're you know an hour drive from Milwaukee, an hour drive from Chicago, and you can catch quality bass like this, like this, it's pretty impressive. And you know it's almost all catch and release here, which is really cool. And again, look at how he ate that man. He really didn't engulf that. And that looks like uh, maybe a smaller male. But Matt, you know, we're in early May now. As the season progresses on these deep, clear lakes and the weeds come up, are you still fishing rocks or are you looking more at weeds then? Not really, John. I mean, it just adds a, a third element. You, you go sand, rock, and then weeds. And what happens is, is those dark spots and then the weeds start absorbing heat too. And it's just, it's just, makes the spot that much better if you can add sand, rock, and weeds to the mix when it comes to all, not only bass, but all game fish. Are you surprised we haven't caught a largemouth in this area? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely been largemouth mixed in here over the years, so I am surprised we haven't seen a largemouth yet. Hey, another one in the back here, Don't man. count him out, don't all count right, him buddy. out. He's got the cadence down, folks. Yeah. Well, hey folks, it's as slow as you can possibly reel is how we're catching these. Okay, here he is. You know, and that's another small male. And uh, Matt, you know, I don't, I don't know, buddy, if uh, you've ever caught any rig, really big smallies here, but these are chunky, well-built fish. And uh, obviously, that's a smaller one right there. But you know, 
one thing, folks, that I've learned today, and I've tried throwing a couple of bigger baits. Matt, I think this time of year when you got the cold water, you want to go small on your bait selection, right? Yeah, there's no doubt, John. Cold water, early. I mean, this is just a small male scrapper. I'm just going to, yeah, he can. He just slip him in. He's yeah, just man. a little male, but man, they're still fun to catch pound for pound. It's my favorite fish. I mean, look at that. Just choking it. But I tried a five inch grub before and no lookers, you know? Yeah, I mean, there's something to be said for these small paddle tails. I mean, this 2.8 inches just seems to be a really, really key size in cold water. And I really love matching it up with an eighth ounce head. I mean, that's a really good combination to reel super slow and you're not dragging it along the bottom. Oh, yeah. There you go. There oh, you go, yeah. Matty B. That, that feels a I little think better, that, one, I buddy? think that's a good fish, John. All right. Real good fish. Okay, here comes Blake with the net, or he's going to hand the net to Chris. Oh, yeah, that's a big fish. Oh, yeah, that that's is a, a big dandy, fish. Matt. Nice inland fish. That is fish. a beauty, buddy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at that Dip bronze that back one. there. Ooh, that's a nice, nice fish, Matt. That's, that's a, nice a gorgeous right small there. Look at that. And you know what's inland kind of tank. interesting, Matt? The deeper we go, the bigger the fish. I mean, the smaller ones we caught today were shallower. Is, is that the normal pattern? Yeah, you're gonna get those, that water warms up the quickest, the little bucks run up there, but these bigger, these big males and these females are definitely gonna hang in that, that eight to 15 foot zone, John. Now when you catch one, do you spot lock or do you just keep moving? Yeah, no, you spot lock for sure, because like I said, they're not necessarily gonna be in a group of 10 on these inland lakes, but a lot of times you see two, three, four fish together. So you wanna spot lock and uh, you're gonna see there's there's better rock mixed in here, so don't you see these dark spots? Don't go flying over them. Now we're smallmouth fishing today, but uh, tell the folks about Lake Geneva. We talked earlier that it's one of the deepest, second deepest lake in the state, but it has a wide variety of fish, right? It has. It literally has everything from muskies to lake trout to walleyes, great crappies. Uh, obviously a lot of largemouth and smallmouth and a lot of big pike. Now we've fished here before for walleyes. They stocked it with a ton of fish and in the spring and the fall it's really a good walleye bite. Really good, yep. There's a lot of night fishing that goes on here because the water's so clear. But I can't get enough of these. Look at that. Look at oh, the build on that fish. That's a solid Shows you bass. how good the fishery is. <laughs> Two in a row, buddy. Yes, back to back, John, and this is a good fish. Well, that's what we <laughs> talked about, spot locking, and oh, that makes a lot exactly of sense. exactly what I did. Not a giant, but it's a really nice fish. Well, they fight so hard. They do. They pull so hard, especially in 50 degree water, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, Look at that fish. There you go, buddy. Just marching that 2.8. That tickle. Let's see there, oh, man. Look at that. Another beautiful that fish. That is just awesome. But that's exactly what we just talked about, how you get one. There might not be a big school, but you spot lock and see if there's another one or two around. Huh? That was textbook, John. Literally caught that fish as I was fighting. It hit spot lock on the Minn Kota. Got resituated, threw it right back downwind. Same super slow retrieve. Kapow. Now let's go again over this. The depths that we're concentrating on are? Eight to 15 is where we've been. And, and these little eighth ounce jigs you can fish effectively? That's exactly, yep. That's an eighth ounce Google Eye swim bait head right there. And just control the speed. And you want to keep it a couple feet off the bottom. But go, uh, I'm going to repeat it one more time. Slow. Slow, slow, slow is the deal. It's now time to announce this week's winners of the Fleet Farm, John Gillespie's Waters and Woods 2023 Fishing Contest. Key Schwalbe of Oshkosh caught this 10-inch bluegill on Big Green Lake on a wax worm. Earl Boyson of Woodstock, Illinois caught this 39-inch lake trout on Lake Michigan on a blade bait. Kirk Alford of Owatonna, Minnesota caught this 15-inch perch on Dry Lake. He was using a wax worm. Angela Hine of Naperville, Illinois caught this 39-inch pike on Lake of the Woods on a smelt. And this week's kids' winners are Henry Schock Jr. of Campbellsport caught this 40-inch pike on Lake of the Woods on a smelt. And Gunnar Schultz of Gillette caught this 11-inch perch on Kentuck Lake on a minnow. Each week, I shop online at FleetFarm.com to check out the latest deals. This week, 20% off the MEPS, lures, and kits on sale starting at $2.87. And save 25% on the Rapala Rip and Wraps on sale, two for $10. Meet Chris McGillis of McGillis Weimer, experienced personal injury lawyers. A lot of the people that watch your show 
I mean, those are the type of customers and clients that we have, right? I mean, good people care about their community. They're passionate about the outdoors. That's just been a way to have a bond with somebody in a relationship. To truly tell a, a client's story to a jury or a judge and be persuasive, I really think you got to be able to walk in their shoes and, and, and be able to explain why what happened to them matters. Folks, I'll tell you what, Amsoil is the sportsman's best friend. They've got a product to keep all your machines running well. Pete, my bow mount is sticky, it makes noise, and Amsoil has a product to fix that. Yeah, and you should have been using it. Silicone spray is recommended for the shaft and the belt on these trolling motors. You see this belt, this is what makes the motor travel up and down. So what you want to do is spray the whole shaft itself. Get a good coating on that. You want to spray the belt here on the backside as well. Once it dries, it lubricates, and it also protects the belt itself. It keeps it from cracking and drying out, and it also resists dust and dirt. One other thing, these locking pins recommend a little bit of uh, Amsoil synthetic water resistant grease. Those are two things that just gonna make this motor work much more smoother and last a lot longer. Again, it's called? Amsoil silicone spray. Go to amsoil.com. Amsoil.com. You know, Matt, this is the time of year where a lot of guys are putting new line on their reels. And I love this high-vis uh, Smackdown uh, by Seagar. I like to see where my bait is in the water, and that high-vis shows up really well. And I put that on all my reels. It's 20-pound test. It's very castable. And then, Matt, what you do is you change your leader material to fit the species you're fishing for, right? Uh, yeah, John, exactly. Crappies, I like six pound leader. For bass, I use eight or 10. And then as you get up until walleye is kind of the same as bass, eight to 10. And then if you get on the Great Lakes and fish trout and salmon, you can bump up to like a 17 or 20. But yeah, that 20 pound smackdown literally is good for the entire season. So tie a double uni knot or whatever type of uh, knot. There's a lot of good ones on the market. Splice them. I like to leave about six to eight feet of, of the fluorocarbon and uh, let it come right through your guides. And it's, it's an awesome way to fish all season. Hey, look at that. McGillis hey. is alive. All right. Oh, here he is, too. Nice. Had a nice fish there. Is it a nice one, man? Oh, yeah, it's a nice fish. Oh, <laughs> yeah, a Chris. There's a big in, baby. There's a four pounder. That's, that's a nice fish. Chris, that's that a is a pounder. beautiful smallmouth bass. Oh, that's a four and a half. That's Look at the that biggest fish. one of the day. Absolutely oh, there, Chris. Oh, oh, oh. Look at that. That's a four yeah. and a half. -er. Nice job, buddy. Fish. Wow. And you know, Chris, this, this early spring or cold water fishing, you don't get as many bites as you do in the summer, but that right there is a gorgeous smallmouth. Hey, Look he, at that. It is a gorgeous fish. Inland Lake. Look at the colors on him, John. Yeah. That's the biggest one of the day, isn't it there, Matty B? Yeah, it is. What do you think and it's funny. Heavy? We just switched colors, too. We put this, that rainbow middle color on, John. A tick on the tickle. Oh, you know, that's, a, that's all four and a half. I mean, that fish could be four and three quarter. I mean, that is, that's a 20-inch pre-spawn brownie. Great now, I know, Chris. Nice job. That smallmouth is one of your favorite deals. Have you ever fished him with this slow of a retrieve before? John, you know, uh, like you said, I love fishing smallmouth. I have fished them this slow, but it, it does take effort and concentration sometimes. You know, you really got to be slow with your retrieve and be disciplined, and that it does pay off. Yay! Yay! You have worked hard today. I don't even care if it's small. No, uh, the bite's fun though, isn't it? Yep, it is. Okay. I think you, is that a flipper in her there, Matt? I think so, Johnny. Okay, Blake, get her up a little bit. You know how to flip them in. There you go. Hey, congratulations, Blake. No, Hard work pays off. <laughs> No, it's a it's a tough way to fish because we're not used to fishing this slow, right? Yeah, and obviously they have an advantage in the front of the boat. Um, but, you know, you and I back here, you caught four and I've caught zero. Well, now one. One. But, yeah, so that slow retrieve is pretty tough. But I actually picked up the speed a little bit. And oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. You know, we moved in a little shallower, Matt, and they get smaller. You know, just like we talked about? Yeah. But they fight, buddy. No, it is interesting. And with that 12 pound cigar, I can just flip that baby in there. Not a bad fish, but it is interesting. The bigger fish that we've caught today, folks, have been in the deeper edge, and there's no doubt about it. 
And, uh, you know, these fish are light in color, Matt, so when they're light in color like that, that means they just moved into the shallows, right? Yeah, for sure, John. Those fish been wintering out in that lot deeper water through the winter time, and then this warm weather brought them up, and then when they start living in these rocks, they kind of change darker, and that's where you catch those really dark ones, because some of them will live shallow the rest of the year, and then a lot of them will move back out deeper to the breaks. Let's go! Well, actually, you just scared Blake with that hook oh, set. You yeah. almost hit her in Dang, the head, that felt good. Why did I come up with Is that a big fish? Yeah, it's bulldog, and it's, oh, like, yeah. it's a three-and-a-half oh, yeah. pounder. Look at that thing. Gosh, Ooh, that's a nice yeah, fish. yeah, that's another beauty, Matt. Yeah, it is. And you know, that's been Tip the pattern Blake. today, buddy. We're back nice. out in 14 feet of water. <laughs> oh. Look at that fish. Nice that is fish. a beauty, Matt. Nice fish. But you know, look that, at that. That reinforces the pattern, doesn't it, Matt? Yes, it does. Look at that. Just choking it. And you know, we're Down fishing the these real light jigs in 14 feet of water, which is amazing me that they'll come up and eat that like that. Yep, eighth ounce, John. It's, uh, look at that fish. I mean, super, super slow. And in this clear water, in this in this pattern, John, you can do this anywhere. You have clear water, largemouth, smallmouth. I mean, even walleyes, these fish will seek it out and uh, you're matching the forage. So there Boy, it goes. Boy, is that a gorgeous bass. Yeah, it is. Look at that fish. Look at that, folks. <laughs> That's a dander. Yes. I just can't get you out of here, can no, I, man? No, that sun's setting, John. I want to keep on hammering on them. Well, you know, we're gonna, <laughs> nice fish. Yeah. You know what's, what was interesting today was uh, our prediction came through. through. There's a chunk. You know, the, the sun shone on the water all day. Yeah. We got a little bit of a breeze, and that's what made these fish go, right? Yeah, two days of sun. Bing, boo. And the rest of, May should, May, rest of May out here should be really good. Oh, the whole month of May, June, awesome. Absolutely. Look at that chunk rock. If you are a spring walleye fisherman, grab some of these. They're an incredible bait. Kalins, rattling Google eye, hair jigs. Right there, Ryan. Ooh, that one pounded it. Wow, dude, that is my first cast. Beautiful walleye right there on the hair, man. Turkey, lively, smacking hair jigs. Doesn't get much better, does it? Big, fat, chunky spring walleyes. Uh, oh, Pete, I'm getting too old for this. So, John, you haven't heard of Brian's custom steps? Oh, Pete, those are awesome. How can I get a set? Yeah, I love these big no-slip platforms, and they're made right here in Wisconsin. For more information on Brian's custom steps, call 920-315-0333. And folks, that is our show for today. Please join us next week. I don't know what we're going to fish yet. We will find a place somewhere. Until then, I'm John Gillespie, hoping to see you enjoying John Gillespie's Waters and Woods.